good afternoon. I'm going to get started. Um, so my plan is that is to spend about 15 minutes to go over um, a few topics in section 7.2. And then we're going to go over a couple of more questions. Uh, I know Aiden has a question, and I'll go over that example from the homework. Um, and uh, if you have any other questions about finding volume using disk, um, or share or shell method, we can go with them before the quiz. All right. Um, so let me get started with section 7.2. Uh, last time we went over the trait identities. And uh, if you haven't looked at them yet, um, or if you're not familiar with them, make sure you spend some time take a look at my notes from last lecture. So this is just a continuation from 7.2, which is trick integrals. So the first type of questions we're going to look at is integrals in the form of sine raised to a power m of x times cosine raised to a power n of x dx. So m and n are integers. Um, so here, so m and n are positive integers. Uh, I'm just going to see. Uh, so there's a few different um, techniques that we could use depending on the value of M and N. So the first one is if N is even, sorry, if N is odd, so let me rewrite this. Um, if the power of cosine is odd, so that means um, n is odd, so n equals 2k plus 1. That's how we usually represent the odd number. Then, uh, no, it's not going to be on the quiz um, tonight. Don't worry. But it, it will definitely be on the next um, on the exam we're going to have next week, next Thursday. Then save. So let me it's red here. So save one cosine and use u substitution substitution by setting u equals sine x. So I'm going to explain what that means using the example one here. So example, so if we have, uh, you know, integrating sine m x cosine to the n of x dx and n is odd, so the power of cosine is odd. So we're going to save one of the cosine, just put it aside. And then we're going to translate everything else in terms of sine. And then we set u equals sine x. Uh, so for example, in the first example here, I have integrating cosine to the fifth power of x dx. So the, the, this is n, right? The power of cosine is odd. So I'm going to set one of the cosine aside so I can rewrite this integral as so I'm going to rewrite this integral as integrating cosine to the fourth power of x times cosine x dx. So this is what I meant by setting one of the cosine aside. Just save it, as, you know, saving one cosine, set it aside, don't touch it. And then the next step is I'm going to rewrite the cosine to the fourth power of x in terms of cosine squared, squared. So that's, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna do it on side. So note, cosine to the fourth power of x equals cosine squared x squared. And then that is equivalent to, if you recall the, um, the, the trig identity we had, one of them is 
coming from sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So cosine squared X equals one minus sine squared X. That's just a trick identity. So therefore we can write cosine to the fourth power of X as cosine squared X squared, which is one minus sine squared X squared. That's just substituting for cosine squared. And now I'm gonna go back to the integral I have. So I have integrating, one minus sine squared x squared and outside we still had that cosine we saved earlier dx and then the next step we're going to be using u substitution by letting u equal sine x that's what the technique said um, so. and then du equals cosine x dx Immediately, you can see the benefit is that cosine x dx, we had that in the integral by saving the cosine x with dx. Um, so that will become du, or you can just solve for dx directly and a plug in, but we can always just substitute directly since we're comfortable with it. Hopefully, we're comfortable with u substitution. So the integral will become one minus sine x squared, so that's sine x is u, so that's a u squared, but outside we still have this square there. And then the cosine x dx, that just become du. I sort of did the couple steps all together. If you didn't believe me, you could solve for dx there. So dx equals one over cosine x du. When you take this, put into to replace dx, the cosine cancels out, give you du left. Now, can we integrate this? Of course we can. We can just expand the, the square term. So that's a one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth. Integrating that with respect to u, we end up with integrating one du, du that's just u, um, integrating uh, negative two u squared, bring the negative two aside. So u squared when we integrate give us u cubed over three and uh, plus integral of u to the fourth, that's a u to the fifth over five plus a constant c. That's pretty good, we integrated everything. So the last step is substitute for u. Remember u is sine x, so we get sine x, that's u minus two over three sine x cubed, so I'm going to put the cube next to the sin, next to the n there, that just means sine x cubed, plus one fifth u to the fifth, that's a sine x to the fifth power, plus a constant c. So this is the integral, the antiderivative, um, when we integrate cosine to the fifth power of x dx. Any questions on what I did in this example? Now, the reason we can do this is it's actually right here. So this is sort of the, the key part to make this technique work. Um, because we know that derivative of sine will be cosine. And uh, if we, in the integral, if we had a cosine x dx, so that means when we set u equals sine, that will give us, um, that will give us du. And then the rest, we can always, and then the rest is that if we have our power, we save a, save a cosine, and then we end up with cosine with an even power. And then that we can always translate it using one minus sine squared to replace cosine square x. So this technique always works whenever you have a cosine that's an odd power. Uh, why didn't we just, why didn't we just get one, Um, one minus um, okay. um yeah so so those are good questions um 
So the first question, um, so why we just did one minus two sine to the two X sine to the four X. Oh, I see. So when we had one minus sine, I'm going to erase this in a second, sine squared x squared. Um, why didn't we just expand it? Uh, you could expand it there, um, but then you still have to use, you could expand it as one minus two sine squared x plus sine to the fourth x. Um, it, it, that's okay. And then, then later when you set u equals sine, you still end up with the same expression. That's totally okay. But I just, it's like, um, I just substitute for u first, um, u equals sine x first, and then expand the square. I don't think it make a difference there. Um, the next question is why don't we let u equals one minus um, sine square x So u is sine x, right? So, so let me explain that that's a question that says, why don't we let u equals one minus sine square x? Um, well, if we do that, then du will be negative, one becomes zero, negative two sine x cosine x dx, right? That, that is okay. But what happened is that if I solve for dx or solve for cosine dx and I put in there, so let's just see we solve for dx, make it easy. So dx equals one over negative two sine x cosine x in the denominator, du. And if I put this into the integral, we recall that the integral is integrating this cosine x dx. So if I substitute in there, so I get integrating u squared cosine x and then I have one over um, negative two sine x cosine x du so the cosine will cancel but I still have a sine x in the denominator and a u square in the numerator and that will give you a little bit of trouble there because u is one minus sine square x so you're gonna to have to solve for sine x from u squared, um, make it a little bit more complicated there. So it's better not to set this inner part to be u, just sets u equals sine x. Eventually you're gonna end up with a, a final answer, but it's just more challenging in some of the steps. You can try that. You know. So u is just, so in this technique, just set u equals sine x, that will be the easiest. Any other questions? Now, the second technique, I add more space here. So that's the first technique. Now I didn't see that. So in the first te technique, we only care about the power of cosine to be odd. What about the power of sine? It doesn't matter. As long as the power of cosine is odd, you can always use this approach. Now the second one, the second technique that if power of sine is odd, that means the m, so the in, the in in the integral sine to the m x cosine to the n x dx, so the m would be our odd number, so that's a two k plus one. In this case, we're going to save. We're going to save one of the sine. 
And then we're going to use U substitution by letting U equals cosine of X. So it's sort of similar, but now we're going to put us, if the power of sine is odd, we're going to take one of the sine, we're going to put it aside, and then we're going to let U equals cosine X. This is the second technique. Here's this example I have, which is sine cubed x cosine square x dx. So the power of sine is odd here. So obviously the cosine of the power of cosine is even. So we really don't care. So so don't don't care about this. It doesn't matter what that power is. As long as this one is odd, then we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the sine cubed as sine squared times sine. So this integral becomes integrating sine square x. And I'm going to put that sine, I split it, and I'm going to put it all the way with dx. So sine x dx. So that's a sine cube. And I also I already had a cosine square x given. So I end up with this. So this sign, let me underline, this is what I saved by putting it aside. And then the next step is that just like I did before by writing everything in terms of sine, but now I'm going to take the sine squared, write it in terms of cosine. So note sine square x is equal to one minus cosine square x. We're going to put it in there. Oh, I forgot to write something. I'll add it later. Um, so that's integral one minus cosine square x cosine square x times sine x dx. And then now I'm going to let u equals cosine x du is equal to derivative of cosine is um, uh, negative sine x dx. Here, just difference by a negative. So sine x dx is already in the in the integral, and uh, here I have a negative sine x dx. So I'm going to rewrite it. Just make it easy. So that's you can solve for dx if you like and I put in there, but it doesn't make a difference. So it's negative du will be equal to positive sine x dx. I can substitute in there. Which is negative du. Um, like I said, you don't have to write like this. You could just say, oh, I'm going to solve for dx, which is 1 over negative sine x du. And then take this term and then put it in there. It will work as well. Um, I'm just checking. I feel like I have an internet issue. I apologize for that. Um, so now I can rewrite the integral here. So this integral I'm integrating. U is cosine, so I get 1 minus U squared. So that's 1 minus cosine squared. And then cosine squared, that's a U squared outside of this, the parentheses. And then sine x dx, that just becomes negative du. If you plug in one over negative sine du for dx, you get the same thing. And I can bring the negative in front and then distribute the, the u square into the parentheses. So I get negative integrating. And if I distribute the u square there, so I get u square minus u to the fourth du. From here, I can. Um, and the antiderivative for each term. So I get negative u squared, give me u cubed one third uh, minus u to the fourth, that's uh, u to the fifth, one fifth plus a c. That just becomes, um, if we 
just review the negative and also um, substitute for u. I'm going to do it all together. Hopefully that's okay. So that's a negative one third u cubed. U is cosine. So I get cosine cubed x minus minus become positive one fifths u fifths. That's a cosine to the fifths. So cosine to the fifths x plus a negative c. I'm going to keep it positive c. It doesn't make a difference. So this is the, um, the, in, the antiderivative. Any questions on this example? So it's sort of, it's a very, it's basically the same approach we did with the previous example, right? When we had a cosine has the R power, you just put one cosine aside and then call U equals cosine. Um, so that's an important part. Now, one thing I forget to note is that in those kind of examples, we probably always can end up using this identity I'm boxing in purple on the side here. So sine squared equals one minus cosine squared X um, because we want to, so after we save one sign, the rest of the sign doesn't matter there because we want, to be, want them to be functions of cosine. So we can set U equals cosine. So you always want to turn the remaining sine squared or sine to the fourth power, sine to the sixth power in terms of um, cosine squared. So that's an important um, identity to use. And just like in the previous example, I probably should know that we always can end up using cosine squared equals one minus sine squared to rewrite all the cosine terms. Any questions? All right, the next one is, so the third technique is really not a technique, but the third case. So if both, and both um, if the power of cosine and power of sine Odd, then either of the approach will be fine. Ah, um, Sam, you're getting ahead. So that's the next thing. So right now we're just looking at, so the first case is the power of cosine is odd, right? So you set, you save a cosine aside. The, the, the power of sine doesn't matter in that case, just, just focus on the cosine. The second case is that if the power of sine is odd, you set, away a, you set a sine aside. Now, what if both powers, if the power of sine, the power of cosine, they are all odd, those are odd, what do you do? It doesn't matter, you can set one sine aside or set a cosine aside, um, one of the approach will work. Um, then the next case, I'll talk about when they're even. So let me quickly go through this example. So here, sine, the power of sine is one, the, the power of cosine is three. So it doesn't matter since I already have a sine by itself. So I'm gonna just save it aside, put it aside. So here, I'm just gonna write, um, just rewrite it. So we're integrating cosine cubed x sine x dx. So sort of putting this aside, right? Well, if I set sine aside, so that means I'm going to, so if you recall that if we save a sine, so that means we're going to set u equals cosine in the second technique. So I'm going to let u equals cosine x du equals negative sine x dx and then solve for dx, or you can just solve for sine x dx altogether. So you get negative du equals sine x dx and that can replace sine x dx there. 
So we get integral becomes integrating u cubed, and then this just become negative du. It's actually a lot easier, which is negative integral of u cubed du, which is negative u to the fourth power one fourth plus a c. And then you just rewrite the u, which is cosine to the fourth power x plus c. Right. So that's the case if both are odd, it doesn't really matter. As long as one of them is odd, you can use that technique not to. The fourth case, if both um, power of those powers of sine and the cosine even. So if we have this case, then the technique above doesn't quite work there. So in this case, we're going to rewrite the the the, the squares, the sine squared, the cosine squared, not using the, the identity we had before. We're going to use a different one. We're going to use um, sine square x equals one half one minus cosine two x if you remember this this coming from um cosine double angle formula equals um one minus two sine square x oh wow, that's one plus i believe so double check uh, mm, one, one, two, seven. One minus, sorry, one minus cosine two x. So basically, it's a variation from this double angle formula. And then all we can use cosine square x equals one half one plus. Um, sorry, I'm just double check, make sure I did it. Yeah, one plus cosine two x. So instead of using sine square equals one minus cosine square or cosine square equals one minus sine square, here we're going to use a different expressions, different equations for sine square and cosine square. And then carry on the integration from there. So we're going to use those to substitute. or sine square and cosine square terms before integrating. Right. So this example I'm gonna do next, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's a good example to show that if you have a sine square and the cosine the power of cosine is also even, so both are even. So we're going to use this technique first. Um, because the other technique that by setting a cosine aside and the setting a sine aside doesn't quite work. So here we have a sine square x cosine to the fourth power of x dx. So sine square x, I can substitute with one half, one minus cosine two x directly. But the cosine to the fourth power, I have to rewrite as cosine squared squared. So there's a lot of squares in this case. Make sure you're with me. Um, otherwise, it could be confusing. So that's equal to, so I'm going to rewrite this as integrating sine square x cosine square x squared dx. Next, I'm going to substitute for sine squared and a cosine squared. So that's. Um, integral of one half one minus cosine two x times parentheses one half one plus cosine two x and then square outside yeah so there's a lot of terms with two x and also square just be careful each step 
And then the next step is I want to bring out the, the constants. So I get half from this part, I can bring it out. The next part, when I distribute the square, I get one half squared. So that's one half, one fourth. I can bring it out as well. So maybe I just put one more step here. So let's bring, what, bring out one half. So that's integrating one minus cosine two X times one fourth, one minus one plus cosine two X squared. Yeah, so I can bring one force outside as well. So that will give me one ace integrating. We got one minus cosine two X times, then I have one plus cosine two X squared. So I'm gonna expand this. So expand the square term. So that becomes one plus two cosine two X plus cosine squared 2x, cosine 2x squared, dx. So all the things I'm doing now is just um, substituting for sine squared, cosine squared, and then expand the square, uh, move the uh, constant coefficients to the front. Are you with me there? Um, okay, good. Um, so, so I haven't done any integration yet and I'm not gonna do integration until like a couple of steps from now. So the next is I'm just gonna expand this um, by, by multiply out the two parentheses. So if I'm, I'm gonna do, be a little bit careful. So one times one is one. So I still have like a one ace with the integral in front, but I'm just expanding the two, term, the two parentheses terms. So I get one times one is one, and the one times this term, that's a plus two cosine two X, and the one times this term, that becomes positive cosine squared two X. And now I'm gonna distribute the, the negative cosine two X, so that's a minus cosine two X, negative cosine two X times, times two cosine two X, um, so that's a negative two cosine squared two X and distribute that to the last term. So that's a negative. I get cosine two X times cosine squared. So that's cosine cubed two X DX. So it looks like we got a lot of terms going on, which is right. A lot of terms, but it's not too bad, right? At least we can simplify some of them. For example, uh, those two I can put together. Um, and also the cosine square term, I can put them together. So I get one ace integrating one plus cosine two X and then the minus cosine squared two X. Maybe next time I should, yeah, well, how much we can do here, just a lot of twos and the squares. Minus cosine cubed two X DX. Right, so now we can actually integrate each term. Um, some of the terms is easy to integrate, some of the terms are not so easy, but nevertheless, we can try to integrate them. Uh, we could also play with the power here. We could uh, rewrite the cosine square term again, just like we did at the beginning, write the cosine square X, we can rewrite it here. We could also try to um, rewrite this, but I think if I do, it's easier that way, but it might be confusing because I have a lot of terms. Um, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna sort of integrating each term. So I'm gonna write as one ace, just leave it outside, don't worry about it. Um, and I'm integrating one dx plus integral of cosine two x dx minus integral of cosine squared two X DX minus integral of cosine cubed two X DX. So we can focus on each term separately. That's what I meant. Um, so the first term, obviously we can find the antiderivative. The second term, 
I hope you know how to find the antiderivative there. Um, you just have to use a u substitution if you don't see it directly. So, so we can let u equals 2x, use a u substitution there. So this one, I'm assuming that you're going to be okay. This one, we're going to let u equals 2x and then du equals 2dx. So dx equals one half du. If you put in there, this integral will become um, one half, I'm going to bring in front, just for this integral in the middle here, one half cosine 2x becomes cosine u, and the dx becomes one half du, but the half is already in front, so du. So now you can integrate this part, just if you are um, sine u and times half. And don't forget to replace a u there with a 2x, so that's a one half sine 2x. So that's coming from the second term. Now you probably wonder already, what about the third term? It's a cosine squared 2x. Well, here, the power of cosine is 2 is even, and then the power of sine is 0, which is also even, technically. So here, again, we have to use the, the we have to rewrite this square term. So this integral becomes integrating, um, so we have to rewrite the cosine squared 2x. So I'm going to erase this in a second. I'm just going to put it below here. So recall that cosine squared x is 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x. Then cosine squared 2x, that will become 1 half 1 plus cosine 2 times 2x cosine 4x in there, which is 1 half 1 plus cosine 4x. So that's what I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to rewrite this cosine squared 2x and then write it as 1 half 1 plus cosine 4x dx. And uh, kind of get this in the way. So. And then now we can bring half in front and then work on each term there. So that becomes one half integral of one. We can integrate plus cosine 4x, which we can integrate just like the cosine 2x. We use a u substitution. Here we're going to use u substitution for 4x dx. So I'm going to let you finish that part later. Just, just for your practice. So this part, when you reintegrate it, you need to use U substitution. And to carry on that. So you end up with, I think it's like a one over four sine four X. And they used to have a one in front um, times and everything multiplied by half. So that'll be a good practice for you. Now, what about the last term? Let me move this over a bit. This last term, it's cosine cubed 2x. Don't worry about the 2x, just let the 2x be what it is, right? So what about cosine cubed? Well, the power is odd, so that means we can save a cosine aside like we did before. So this integral, if we just focus on it, we can write as integrating cosine square 2x times cosine 2x dx by saving a cosine aside. Don't worry about the 2x in the cosine. And from here, if you recall the first example we did, after we save the cosine, we rewrite the other cosines in terms of sine squared. So that's cosine squared, this part. Let me use a green. So this part, we can rewrite it using um, 1 minus sine squared. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So that's a 1 minus sine squared 2x just coming from there. And then we're still integrating this and the cosine 2x dx. So that becomes 
uh, we forget to set u. So now we're going to let u equals sine two x. So du equals cosine two x, and then that's a half coming from the two x, and then dx. From here, we can solve for um, cosine two x dx, so that means two du equals cosine two x dx. Substitute in there. So this integral becomes integrating one minus u squared, and then one half and the two du, and then you should be able to integrate from here, which is two integrating one minus u squared du, and then carry on from there. Now, I want to point out that I use a lot of u's in this case. They are all different. Right? They're, they're not the same. So, for example, when I say, oh, I'm going to call u equals 2x, that's only for the second integral. When I say, oh, I'm going to let u equals 4x, that's only part of the third integral, right? The cosine 4x term when we integrate, we're going to let u equals 4x. That's only for that part. And then the the... At the end, when I say, oh, I'm going to let u equals two, sine 2x, two that's only for the third integral after we, you know, do a little bit of substitution, um, save for cosine. Um, so that, that u is only for the, the last part. So when you set those equals u, you have to keep track of which one is the correct u. Um, so that at the end, when you substitute the u back into the, into the final answer, you don't kind of mix them up. That, that's that's uh, some that's something I, I want to point out. Um, you could just say, okay, I'm going to let u equals 2x. The next time, I'm going to call it w. I'm going to call it b. You just call it different variables. That's okay, too. So what is the final answer here? Um, <laughs> what is the final answer? Good question. Let me see. I did not get to the final step. So let me just write... Oops, let me just write down a couple of things, a couple of steps. And I'm going to finish this problem. I'm not going to write down all the details. Hopefully that's okay. So let me write down what I have. So this, this third term, when I integrate, I get one half times integrating one is just x. And then the, the cosine term, which is a one force sine four x, I believe, which is just one half x plus one eighth sine four x. That's from the third term. The last term, when I um, integrate this part, I get two um, u minus u cubed over three. And then, then I have to put u back, which is two, u is what u is sine 2x so it's 2 sine 2x minus um, 2 over 3 u is sine 2x cubed so sine cubed 2x and then that's the last term so put it all together i get 1 8 bracket the integral of 1 is just x and then i get plus 1 half sine 2x and then I have minus one half x plus one eighth sine four x. And I have minus the last term two sine two x minus two over three sine cubed two x. And that's you know you distribute the one eighth and you distribute the negative all the terms combine like terms. So that's a one eighth x, like I'm digging myself a grave here. Um, one over sixteen sine two x um, minus one over sixteen x plus one over sixty four sine four x minus um, two times one eighth one fourth sine two x, and then plus minus minus plus. 2, 8, so that's a 1 over 12 sine cubed 2x. And obviously, you have to combine the, the, the x term um, as well as the sine 2x term, any terms that you could combine. So 
So one eighth minus one sixteen, that's a positive one sixteen x. One sixteen sine two x, one fourth sine two x. That's a negative three sixteen. Doesn't matter, I'm sure you're comfortable with it. Okay, so here's a, so wait, wait, stop, because it will be minus 64 sine 4x. Let's see, you might be right. Um, will this be, um, I don't think so, because it just, um, but it will be like a problem, like maybe like a sine square, cosine square, right? That wouldn't take so long. Um, or just like it will be just sine, just cosine to the fourth power, doesn't have the sine square there, right? Something like a little bit wouldn't take that long. But I think that was a, I probably made, made a mistake somewhere. Oh, minus. Yeah, 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 you are right. Thank you. Yep, it will be minus one over 64. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a negative, negative, so it's negative. I mean, negative plus, so it's negative, and then the negative, positive. Okay, Ooh, thank you. See, it's very easy to make mistakes. So, um, and then just minus one over 64 sine four X plus one over 12 sine cubed two X plus a C at the very end. I didn't add a C when I did this. All right, so if I give you a problem, um, <laughs> if I, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so th this is problem, it's take a long, I, it, I'm not going to give you a problem like this. If I want you to practice this, um, this, Technique, I'll probably give you an integral like integrating sine square x um, dx or something like integrating sine square cosine sine square x cosine square x dx or something like you know sine to the fourth power x dx um, or even like sine uh, integrating cosine to the fourth power x dx something a little like practice a technique, but it doesn't take that long to solve, or even like integrating cosine square x dx, right? Things like this. Uh, I might give it to you if I do decide to put this question on the assessment in the future. All right, I, I know this question, you know, takes a lot longer, but it's a good question because you get a lot of um, techniques being practiced here, right? So the, the technique using this, the substitution um, sine square and the cosine square, different from the substitution we had earlier for the squares. And then you basically like algebra, right? You expand um, as much as possible. And then, then you integrate each term, depends on the power of each term. You might have to use U substitution. You might have to use a different technique that we come across earlier. All right. so. It's almost seven o'clock, so come, I'm going to stop. I know there's a one question Aiden asked that I want to go over. Um, this, you might have other questions that we can definitely um, go over them. Okay. Um, so on that note, any questions about this particular example? So where is, why is that half again? So half, let's see. Oh, you talk about the half in the very beginning. When we um when we did the substitution, is that what you meant? Yeah. So this half, okay, and this half. Well, that coming from um coming from the 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 sine square x and the cosine square, the in this expression it always have half. So let me just kind of um yeah. So so let me just quickly derive that for you. So using double angle formula, this kind of, you kind of have to um, review this if you are not familiar with it. So if we have, so the cosine double angle formula, there's a few ways to write it. One of the ways to write as one minus two sine square X. Um, and then, so if we solve for sine square X from here, so the first thing is, it's I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. So that's a cosine two X 
minus one equals negative two sine square x. And then I'm gonna divide by negative two. So I get one over negative two um, cosine two x minus one equals sine square x. And then I can distribute the neg one over negative two, which is the same thing as negative one half in there. So I get negative one half. I actually, you know what, let me take it back. I'm going to distribute the negative, not the half. So the one half stays, there's distribute the negative. So I get negative cosine two X plus one. That's sine square X. And then you rewrite the, the, the bracket part as one minus cosine. So you get one half, one minus cosine two X equals sine squared. So that's where we got the half in those, in those um, expressions. Right, so that's a, that's a half. Any other questions? I'm not hearing any questions, so let me pull out a book page. Um, all right, so no questions on this. Well, I give you some homework problems to try. Um, so work on those. There's a that's a few questions that I haven't talked about yet. You probably don't know how to do it, but do your best on the homework. Um, if that questions was tangent, cosec. Uh, Tangent, yeah. Try them. If you couldn't pick them out, you know, don't worry too much about it. We can cover that on, on Monday. So let me bring our notebook. So there was a question Aiden asked. It's about area between curves. Uh, yeah, if you if you have a question on your mind, you can tell me Christopher and Chris and I we can look at it. Uh, so the first example is that let me just write it down. So given uh, y equals seven over two sine pi x over six, y equals seven over six x, and now we're gonna find the area between them. Now finding area between curves is not gonna be on the quiz today, but you should know this example because this is a different example that we probably haven't come across before. It, will, it might be on the on the exam, so definitely pay attention. I will not spend too much time on it. So if you graph them, the the they're just graphs of sine and a straight line. So you get this curve of the sine, and then the, then it repeats, obviously. And then when you graph the straight line, you get this straight line. So the area between is this area plus this one. If you think about the geometry, because of the symmetry of sine and the symmetry of the straight line, so those two areas are exactly the same size, right? Same, same amount of area. So you could just find the one area and double that, or you can just split the integral into two integrals. So we want the area, but the one on the left has a top function that's a line, the one on the right has the top function that's sine, so they're different. Be careful. So how do we, um, oh, um, wow. I'll, I'll try to be mindful next time. But definitely, you know, questions that's, um, that's challenging. All right, anyway, so you can find the points of intersection by um, just plotting them in decimals, no problem. Um, thank you. So you're gonna find out that this point has the x coordinate three. 
This one has x coordinate zero. This one has x coordinate negative three. And if we use vertical rectangle method, so the, the base of the rectangle is dx. The height of the rectangle is just the difference between them. So for the, for the shaded region on the right here, let me write it for this part. The area equals integrating base area, base times height. And then from A to B. But just for the part on the right, we have integrating from one to three. The dx is the base. So that's the, the dx. And the height is just difference between the two functions. So that's a 7 over 2 sine i x over 6 minus 7 over 6x. That's the height of the rectangle dx. Um, it's, sorry, it's from 0 to 3. Thank you. No, no clue why I wrote it. Thank you, 0 to 3. Um, that's only for the area on the right. So you could calculate that part and then multiply that by two. That will be the total area. Or you could take that area and then you find the area on the left and add them together. But the area on the left, because of the top function is different now, so you have a slightly different integral. So that's from negative three to zero. Again, I'm picking the rectangle to be vertical, so the base is just dx. That's what the, the base of the rectangle is. So that's the top function now is seven over six x um, minus the bottom function, which is the sine, so seven over two sine pi x over six dx. So if you calculate this correctly, you should end up with the same number as uh, the area on the right. Yeah, you can definitely take a seven out, no problem. And um, any, any amount of, you know, any constants that you can take out, you can bring it out. If I were doing this problem, I'd probably write as, you know, let's just take this part, for example. I probably integrate each of them separately. So I can write as seven over six integral negative three zero x dx minus seven over two integral negative three zero sine um, pi x over six dx. So that I can bring the constant coefficients to the front in both integrals. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, negative zero. Um, so, and then the first term is okay, just seven over six, and the x give you x squared over two, right? So one half x squared, you can bring half in front, doesn't matter. And then you plug in negative three to zero. The next term, seven over two, um, here we have to use a u substitution. It's a shortcut but you have to kind of practice a lot. So we can call this u equals pi x over six, du equals um, pi over six dx. So dx equals six over pi du. But in this integral, we get um, integrating negative three to zero sine u dx is six over pi du. Now, six and a pi, they're constant, so we can bring it in front. So we can bring this in front of there. Um, so that becomes seven over two, six over pi, uh, integrating negative three to zero sine u du, which give you negative cosine. So that's a and a seven over two, six over pi, negative cosine u from negative three to zero, but those are the x values. So don't plug in yet. So now we're going to rewrite as uh, negative, but we already have a negative in front, but just keep in mind all the negatives. Um, seven times six, two times pi, and then cosine u is pi x over six from negative three to zero. You can plug in from there. Um, ah, yes, right. So yeah, so that, that's why I want to point out that if you find the 
area separately, you have to be careful with the integral um, because the top function and bottom, bottom function, they, are, they have changed. Because if, you, if you're not mindful, if you just say, oh, what if I just integrate from um, negative three to three directly by using sine being the top function, the cosine being the bottom function, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble there. Um, because it's um, you're going to end up with a zero as a total area, but we just looking at it, we know the total area is not zero. All right, good, good point. Good questions. Um, so I just want to stop there on this question. So any other question? Could you do homework problem y equals eight x cubed, but x equals two? Yeah. Um, so this. So that's that question. Um, all right, how, how about me just writing one more step to finish it? I'm going to let you do the calculation. So seven, and now I'm just going to bring everything into the same line. So I get seven times one, seven over six times one half, seven over 12. And then if we plug in zero, we get zero. Plug in negative three, we get negative three squared. And then minus seven, half times the whole thing, and then we already also have a negative, so bring the negative here. So we get negative, negative, become positive. Uh, seven times six is 42 over two pi, that's 21 over pi. Um, I hope I didn't make a mistake anyway, but double check. Um, and then cosine pi, um, put zero in there, so that's a zero, cosine zero, which is one, minus cosine pi times negative three over um, negative three over six, that's a negative three over six, negative half, so negative pi over two, and the cosine negative pi over two is just a zero. This part is one. All right, so I'm going to stop there. I hope you can finish it from here. Um, the rest is the demand. Again, this just give you area of the part on the left, but the area on the of the part on the right is exactly the same dimension, same 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 area because the the symmetry. So you just calculate one of them, multiply by two, or calculate them separately, add them together for the matter. So if you have questions on this, perhaps just like take note of what I'm writing and I try to finish it on your own, then I can look at it with you um, if you feel unsure. All right, so here's a homework question that's about volume. So that's um, y, e so we're gonna take the region 8x cubed, y equals zero, x equals one, and then we're gonna rotate about, x equals two. So quickly sketch the diagram. Um, 8x cubed just looks like this. And then we're gonna go from y equals zero to y equals, uh, sorry, y equals zero, which is the x-axis. And then the x equals one, which is this part. And then we're gonna rotate that shape about x equals two. So that dotted line is where we rotate. So we need to take this region, rotate about that. And if we do that, and uh, we sort of end up with this solid. So the base is uh, circular. The top is also circular, but in the middle is nothing there. Right, the middle of the cylindrical part I have that part is missing. It's not. The middle is a cylinder that's missing, but outside is, you know, it's a solid. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to use the, I don't know if it asks you to use shell method or disk method. I think it might be a little bit easier to look at the disk method. So the disk method is that we want a circular disk a washer, right? When we cut it, 
because of the base is circular and the top is also circular. So you probably better just to cut it horizontally, like flat. Um, so if you cut it horizontally, you sort of end up with this circular shape. But in the middle of that circular shape, you get a circle that's missing. At the thickness, I didn't call that thickness. Oops. That's a bit different. So the, this part, so this part is the thickness of the, in this case it's a washer, it's not a, a disc because the middle is missing. And I'm going to redraw it on the side. So you sort of have this shape with a circle missing in the middle, this corresponding to x equals two. And the thickness is just change in the thickness. So the, the disc is flat, but the thickness is in the y direction. So the thickness is delta y or dy in the interval. And then we next we need to find the area because volume is equal to integrating the, the cross-sectional area. Times the thickness and the cross-sectional area in this case is the difference that the this is the cross-sectional area that we're looking for is it the the difference between the difference between the, the the two circle areas so we can call this radius one and that's not a good way to label it i'm going to label it to the left so this is a radius one and the diagram that corresponding to this distance. Right. So that's the first radius. And then you have another radius R2, which is this part, the one in blue. So let me just write down the, the, the cross-sectional area is equal to the the pi times r1 squared minus pi times r2 squared. r1 is the, the green part, r2 is the blue part. Um, r2 in the drawing, I'm going to draw it later. So how do we find r1? Well, r1 is the distance. It's a horizontal distance between, between the curve, the 8x cubed, y equals 8x cubed, and the that the, the, the axis that you rotate about x equals q. Because we're looking for a horizontal distance, so we have to subtract two x values because here you have x equals two here, and then you have y equals eight x cubed. You cannot subtract directly. So we have to take this one and then write it as x equals something, then we can subtract. So we have to rewrite this first function, uh, right as one eighth y, so divide by eight equals x cubed, take cube root, so x equals cube root of one eight y, or one eighth y to the one third. Cube root of one eighth is one half, so you got one half cube root of y, that's what x is. So the radius one, the r one here, is just equal to the one on the right, two, minus the one on the left, which is one half cube root of y. That's the first radius. Does that kind of make sense here? You have to look at the horizontal distance between, you know, the, the dotted line, the one that we, the, the axis of rotation, and also the curve. But the curve is given in terms of y equals 8x cubed. You have to translate that into um, x equals you know, cube root of one eighth y um, in order to subtract the, the subtract that from two to get the difference in the x direction. And the, in the y, the other one, the, the smaller radius is the blue one. That one is a bit easier to understand. So R2 is the distance between 
the vertical line, the black vertical line, which is x equals one. All right, let me finish this. And also the dotted line, x equals two. So how do we find the difference between x equals one and the x equals two? Well, we're looking for the difference between the, the horizontal distance is the change in the x values, right? The difference in the x values. You already have x equals one, x equals two. So the R2, it's just equal to two minus one, equals one, all right? All right, when you need to flip the, the when, you need, when, do you, when do we need to flip the, um, the variables, right? You can think about because we're integrating with, with respect to y, the, the thickness of dy, so we keep everything in terms of y. You could also think, when I find the first radius R1 here, I'm looking for the, the horizontal, so radius one is a horizontal measurement, right? That's what R1 is. That horizontal measurement is the difference between the function y equals 8x cubed and the x equals 2. Well, how do we find the horizontal difference? We always find the, the x value and subtract them, right? That's how we find the horizontal distance. So you have to take the first function y equals 8x cubed, you have to rewrite it in terms of x equals something. So you can subtract that x value from x equals two. That's how you get horizontal difference. It's just like if I tell you uh, what is distance, I'm gonna erase this in a second, between y equals five and x equals two. Well, you can't find that difference because x equals two is here, but y equals five is all the way here, right? So you cannot just say, oh, I'm gonna take five away from two. It doesn't work that way because one is a y, one is x. But if there's some way we can rewrite y equals five as x equals something, then we can subtract because we always know how do we how to find distance between x equals five and x equals two, right? We can just subtract directly because those are x values. So we can find that horizontal difference between those x values. That's why we need to take the y equals 8x cubed and then translate it into x equals something. So we can subtract that from x equals two to find that horizontal difference. If we're looking for some vertical difference, um, th this is a good question, very good question, Chris. So if we say, oh, what is the vertical difference between this curve and this curve? Right, let's see y equals 2x something. And then y, let's just say square, I'm making up those numbers, y equals 5x cubed. If I want to know the diff, the vertical difference between them, I just subtract the two y values, which is we take 2x squared minus 5x cubed, right? That give, because you, they are already in the form of y equals something and y equals something you can subtract. But if one of them one of them says, oh, x equals y squared, the other one is y equals 5x cubed, you cannot subtract directly. You have to translate the first one into y equals perhaps positive square root of x. Now you can subtract the to find the difference in the y. Good question. Um, I'm sure other people was confused on it too. So but whenever you just rem rem remember that whenever you find the, the horizontal distance, you're subtracting two x values. You need to make sure that they're like x equals something, x equals something, so you can subtract. When you find a, a, a vertical difference, you need to make sure that they're like y equals something for both of them, so you can subtract. All right, this is a good question. Um, I didn't finish yet. So let me finish writing this. So now we get the two radius, R1 and R2. And uh, I'm just going to put in the, the volume integral. So volume equals integral. Uh, the cross-sectional area is pi R1 squared, which is 2 minus 1 half cube root of y squared minus pi R2 squared. I'm going to take out a pi. So R2 squared, just 1 squared, just 1. And that's the area, 
times the thickness, which is dy, because we talked about the thickness of delta y earlier. Now, since we're integrating in the y direction, so I need to know the boundaries for y. Uh, you have to find out that this point of intersection is 0, 0. x equals 1. This curve gives me 8, so 1, 8. So the, so the, bound, the interval of y value is from 0 to 8. And from here, the rest is about, you know, just be careful with all the calculations. Um, you can bring out the, the pi integrating 0 to 8, expand the square from the first part. So that's a 4, 2 squared is 4, and then 2 times 1 half times a 2, that's a minus 2 square root of cube root of y. You can write as y to the 1 third. And then minus the, the one half cube root of y squared. So that's a one four, that's a positive, sorry, not minus, positive one fourth. y to the one third square, y to the two over three, minus one. And then find the antiderivative dy. Find the antiderivative from there for each term. I don't think it's difficult. Just be careful with, uh, with you know, adding one to the exponent divided by the new exponent. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Good question. Um, I, I have to, I, I'm going to tell you that, you know, problem like this, when you see it on the quiz, it's, it's a very important to, um, you know, you know, figure out what the area should be if you use disk and a washer method, figure out the radius clearly. Um, after you have them, really just put into the, the volume integral, right? And it, if you make some mistakes later, like, you know, when you plug in numbers or when you do the integration, those mistakes are not the worst part. It's, it's about setting up the correct integral. That's, that's the most important part because if you get that wrong, then the rest of the work is wrong. Uh, you're still going to get points if you continue the, the work, do everything correctly afterwards. You still get points, but I'm just saying, you know, it's important to try to get the integral correct. Right. And if you run out of time, at least, you know, show me that in the, at least find out the, vol the, the integral for volume. Um, if you don't have time to integrate, don't have time to solve. Right. So at least get that big part out of it.